The story starts with the MC walking to his school as we get a glimpse at the environment he has grown up in. A place filled with humans and their different forms of groups they made among themselves. Some who stand on high places and wield power and those who have no choice but to bow to such people. And according to the MC, the same thing is also true for the school he is attending. He describes the rich kids and the delinquents to be the predators that stand at the top and the poor, weak and quiet ones as prey. But he thinks of himself to be neither of those and considers himself a bystander. Neither strong nor weak nor caring about anything that does not involve him. An ordinary student with ordinary grades and ordinary physical abilities is what the MC ultimately describes himself as. The MC, Yushin Lee, arrives at his classroom and we see him put his bag on top of his table as he takes a seat. A guy beside him, a friend of his, calls out to him as they make casual banter related to games. As Yushin Lee is busy teasing his friend, a loud smack rings out in the class as a red-haired dude can be seen slapping a meek-looking guy in the face. As we listen to them talk, we find out that the reason why the red-haired person, named Steve had hit the other guy, whom he had nicknamed as General Big Head, had something to do with Big Head forgetting to bring Steve's gym uniform. Big Head's suggestion of having Steve wear his gym uniform for a day causes Steve to fume with anger as he starts slapping Big Head across his face violently. As Yushin Lee is observing this scene from his seat, his friend calls out to him, telling him to avert his eyes as to not catch any attention to themselves. Yushin Lee, agreeing with what his friend says, complies with his friend's thoughts also agreeing with the fact that it was indeed true that there was nothing they could do to change the situation. But despite knowing that it is just wishful thinking, Yushin Lee still sometimes thinks that if he were as strong as those superheroes from the movies, he would be able to beat them all up and even rescue Harry, Big Head, from that hell. Time continues on as it is now late afternoon and Yushin Lee has left the school with his friend. He makes some small talk with his friend and eventually splits up to then arrive at a small park nearby. He calls out to the cats very enthusiastically and puts down the lunch food he had bought especially for the cats. Some time passes and he is busy looking at the cat gobbling down the food with a grin on his when he gets called out by Harry, catching him off guard. They sit at a bench after their greeting and Yushin Lee learns about the fact that Harry had been the one who would also sometimes feed these cats because of his love for them. Hitting it off because of their shared love for the cats. They seem to be having fun making idle chatter when they get unfortunately noticed by Steve and his gang who calls out to Harry. This surprises Yushin Lee causing him to flinch and stand up. Steve and his gang then arrive in front of them when he also notices Yushin Lee hanging out with Harry and asks Yushin Lee with an evil smile on his face if he was friends with Harry. Yushin Lee is struck by this unexpected question causing him to tense up. He catches the implication behind that question and also the consequences of providing a positive answer which could lead him to become a target of theirs as well. He knew what was the right thing to say but hesitates to say so as he thinks that if he did that, he would be complete trash of a human being. But after thinking on it for a while, he decides to speak up but just as he is about to do so, Harry bellows out saying that they had only met today and were not friends at all intending to protect Yushin Lee from the bullying that would follow if he said otherwise. Steve buys this line as he walks to Yushin Lee and puts his arms around his shoulder, indicating he should be friends with him instead. He then orders Harry to go buy them some food as Harry turns around to glance at Yushin Lee, giving him a reassuring smile. Seeing this causes Yushin Lee to bite his lips in self-loathing as he notices a black cat staring at him. Next morning, Inside the classroom, Yushin and his friend are again busy talking with each other regarding video games when the homeroom teacher walks in, bringing with an unfortunate piece of news, announcing Harry's death which happened to Faye Pryor. Hearing the bad news, Yushin Lee is shaken but Steve does not show any remorse in particular, and only seems to be nervous hoping for him to have not left any letter with names behind. Steve also casually mentions what he thinks to have been the cause of his death while pondering over it which again agitates Yushin Lee, who catches his words from the front. Late after the school, we see Yushin Lee vomiting in a trash can contemplating over the fact that if he had just said something back then, Harry might have not died. He trembles all over as he sheds some tears all the while self-loathing himself. Just then, the black cat we had seen earlies walks up to him and calls out to Yushin Lee, demanding him to stop crying. Hearing the unfamiliar voice, Yushin Lee turns around but does not notice anyone standing before him, when the black cat again speaks, succeeding in drawing his attention towards him. 
The talking cat seems to confuse Yushin Li as he struggles to process how a cat would be able to talk. Ignoring Yushin Li's distraught, the cat continues on with his question asking Yushin Li what he wanted, as he looked like he was in need of some help. Yushin Li trying to affirm, asks again if it was really the cat talking, and after receiving a positive answer, drops to his knees wondering if he had gained some ability to talk with animals in an ironic tone. The black cat talks about wanting to repay Yushin Li for the food he had provided by fulfilling his a wish of his. He talks about making him a fighting god as an example which catches Yushin Li's attention, but his thought process is interrupted when Steve and his gang arrives in front of him, calling out all the while laughing and making fun of Yushin Li. Seeing Steve just laugh even though Harry had just died angers but all Yushin Li could do is clench his fists tightly in frustration showing his helplessness in this situation. This is when Steve announces that since General Bighead went out of commission, it will now be up to Yushin Li to take up the task of being their errand boy. Yushin Li is afraid of what is to come in the future as his heart starts beating faster and faster in fear and sweat covers his body. The black cat who had been watching from the sidelines, pounces and settles himself on top of Yushin Li's shoulder and inquires if Yushin Li was still undecided on his decision on becoming a fighting god. Yushin Li asks back if it was really possible to do so with a stupid face which the black cat decides to take as a yes and announces loudly that starting from today, Yushin Li was going to become a fighting god. Yushin Li, seeing that the situation was still looking as bad as it was, he asks to confirm if he could really trust Blackie, the black cat. His heart continues to pound heart as it feels like it would burst out at any time. Blackie, taking this time to himself, decides to observe their opponent and comes to a conclusion that the enemy was not someone they could take down with just simple adaptation. Steve, after this brief moment of silence, demands Yushin Li to speak up. But scared and confused, Yushin Li ends up asking Blackie for advice and acts on it by covering his mouth with his hand, even though he isn't sure what that would accomplish. Just then, Blackie slips down his shoulders as to get out of sight and shouts while impersonating as Yushin Li and curses at Steve and refuses to comply with his demands. This act freaks out Yushin Li as he starts sweating even more and questions Blackie's intentions. Steve, after hearing Yushin Li's declaration, chuckles and tells him to repeat what he had just said. Right then, after listening to Blackie telling Yushin Li to run, he turns around and dashes off suddenly without any notice. Despite this, Steve just stays behind and does not follow behind him thinking he would get him at school the next day. He and his gang put this incident at the back of their mind and walks away while making plans for stealing some wallets. In the next scene, we see Yushin Lee slumped over at the park, questioning Blackie on why he would tell him to run as it wouldn't solve anything. Blackie then corrects him on his name by revealing that his real name was Mujin. We also find out that Mujin had been merely borrowing the body of that cat as the real him was a general of that land from 1500 years ago. Yushin Li is more surprised by himself for taking this all even as if he was waiting for something like this to happen even though it was completely ridiculous. But Mujin, ignoring his distress, continues on with his story and reveals that his martial art had been completely forgotten due to an injustice and he was now looking for someone who could inherit it. For that, he had been traveling across the country and finally met Yushin Li. He also reveals that a previous student was the famous General Yushin Kim and realizing that they both shared the same name Mujin thought it must have been fate that they met. Already curious about Yushin Li, and then later on after learning about his situation, Mujin decided that the one who would inherit his martial art would be him, Yushin Li. After hearing all this, Yushin Li is somewhat disappointed as he thought that he would be getting some crazy superpower but instead would have to work hard to get the strength he was promised. This causes Mujin to snap in anger and reprimand Yushin Li and decides to dismiss him for today and decides to meet up with him the next day at the same place. The next day, Yushin Li is walking to his school with a squirrel atop his shoulder. This seems to bother him as he asks Mujin, who was inside the squirrel's body if he could move his soul to whatever body he wanted. We learn that Mujin had only done so because he thought it would be better to use this small body instead whenever he had to go to school with him. After a while, Yushin Li arrives in front of his classroom but hesitates to go inside, fearing he would get noticed by Steve. He looks around the class from the corner to see if it was safe to go inside but is caught by fear when he is suddenly greeted by Steve with an evil grin on his face standing right behind him. 
not anticipating Steve to find him so early at all. The scene cuts, and we see Yushin Lee crashing with the classroom walls with a loud thud with a painful groan ringing out from his mouth. He bends on his knees, trying to catch a breath, but Steve inches closer telling him to get back up with a menacing look on his face. Yushin Lee looks over with a grim face as Mujin continues to watch over the situation from inside Yushin Lee's pocket. As Steve gets closer to Yushin Lee, he reaches out with his hand and starts hitting him on his cheeks with mild slaps as if to taunt him. Pissed off by the fact that Yushin Lee refused to repeat what he had said to him the day prior, he hits him suddenly on his face making Yushin Lee's head recoil back due to the force and just as quickly grabs him by his hair. Yushin Lee, grabbed by the hair, continues to look up to Steve with a helpless face as he recalls the chat he had had with Mujin before arriving at the school. Back then, Mujin had told him clearly that he was just going to be observing him for a while and that he should not expect any help from him without proving himself worthy of being his student. He had made it clear that if he deemed him unworthy, he would leave him at the moment without any hesitation. Recalling the moment that far, Yushin Lee decides to try and stand up for himself instead and grabs Steve's hands, pulling it away with his still trembling hands. He tells them there is no need for him to do something for them and they should just do it by themselves. Listening to this and seeing Yushin Lee holding him with his trembling hands, Steve pulls back with towards Yushin Lee's ears and softly says with a maniacal smile on his face that it was simply because he was better at fighting than him, so he should do as he's told if he didn't want to get beaten up. He then puts his arms around Yushin Lee, causing his eyes to dilate as more sweat starts forming on his face. Steve claims him to be his friend but Yushin Lee refutes it, causing Steve to chuckle at the response. Yushin Lee then brings up Harry, which results in him getting smacked in the head again by Steve who is pissed off after hearing him mention a dead guy's name. In that moment, all Yushin Lee felt, rather than pain, was pure anger. The fact that the people responsible for Harry's death didn't feel guilty at all, but also the realization that struck him that he couldn't break free from the situation on his own, hit him far stronger than his anger at them. His clenched fists continue to tremble, but he then looks over after hearing a sound and notices Mujin. And as soon as he did, he had the strange thought that despite not being a main character, if he just had Mujin on his side, then maybe he could be the like the superheroes he had always admired in the movies. He gives Mujin a smile as he stands up and then screams his lungs out, cursing and blaming Steve and his gang for Harry's death. Not being able to hold back anymore after getting cursed at, the guys beside Steve rushes at Yushin, attacking him with a barrage of punches and kicks, which ring out throughout and even outside the classroom. The others present in the classroom continue to observe the situation in silence when Yushin Lee's friend arrives and notices the commotion. He looks ahead to see his best friend, Yushin Lee getting beat up by Steve's gang, causing him to freeze up and leaving him unsure as to what to do to save his friend. He belatedly decides to turn around and go inform a teacher about the incident when a voice catches him unexpectedly, halting his movements. A big guy with dark skin steps in, catching the guy named Chuck's hand, preventing him from hitting Yushin Lee and demands for them to stop hurting him, albeit with very little confidence. The guy named Michael was a person who stuck out in the class because of his huge size, making the delinquents wary of him at first, but after they realized how quiet and meek he actually was, they started looking down on him because of it. Despite being big in size and drawing everyone's attention because of it, Michael was too introverted to make friends and Yushin Lee's friend, Charlie, was his only friend in school. Chuck, not being able to shake Michael off even after threatening him, ultimately resorts to physical violence again as he prepares and hits Michael straight on his face with a quick punch. He keeps on pummeling Michael's head with his punches in quick succession, but it doesn't seem to affect Michael in any way because of his huge build as he just stands there taking all of his punches right at the face with seemingly no difficulty whatsoever. But then, deciding to retaliate against the onslaught of the punches, Michael grabs one of Chuck's hands as he is about to throw out another punch and wildly swings him around, making him whoosh past the air and crash against the wall with a hard thud. This scene causes the surrounding crowd to exclaim in shock at the strength of Michael, which they never thought was something he would have. Another guy from Steve's gang, Mark also decides to go ahead and confront Michael intending to teach him a lesson. Michael again tries to stop the situation from escalating any further by refusing to fight anymore but Mark doesn't take any heed to it and rushes ahead to grapple him in a very aggressive manner. He grabs onto one of Michael's hands and his shirt's collar, wanting to throw him off his feet, 
but he freezes up right after realizing that he didn't have the strength needed to make a huge person like Michael budge from his place. Both of the fighters, covered in perspiration, struggle to get a better hold of each other and at the end, Michael succeeds in grabbing Mark by his waist and lifts him up in the air. Mark, trying to escape the grab, hits Mark on his face with his elbow but fails to elicit any intense reaction from Mark. Tired and reluctant to fight any longer, Mark decides to end it and throws Mark up in the air, and the sheer force behind the throw results in Mark soaring through the air and eventually crashing onto the benches, marking an end to the fight. Yushin Lee looks amazed by Mark's strength and Steve also finds this situation very surprising. Their thoughts are interrupted by the ringing of the bell, announcing the start of another period and Steve also having seemingly lost interest in them for now, makes the rest of the students disperse and then proceeds to slumps down on his seat. Charlie and Michael then check on Yushin Lee, helping him get on his feet as Yushin Lee thanks them for their help. Some time passes and it is now lunchtime. Yushin Lee and Charlie are chatting among themselves as Yushin Lee explains how he got into the situation he did before to Charlie. They both show concern over what they would do later on to deal with Steve, when Yushin Lee also notices that his pocket had been empty and Mujin was nowhere to be seen. His concerns grow even more as he starts sweating at the thought of Mujin leaving him. Back at the classroom, both Chuck and Mark are sulking over their loss against Michael as Steve makes fun of them for losing. One of them further inquires Steve on how they would deal with Yushin Lee and pay him back for this humiliation, and suggests jumping Yushin Lee to teach him a lesson. Steve smirks at the suggestion and thinks it might just be better to show them who they are messing with early on rather than later. After the school has ended, Chuck who had been sitting inside the class along with Mark, catches the class representative going home and calls out to him, threatening him to lend him some money. Caught off guard and scared by this sudden act of the delinquents, the class rep is distressed but has to refuse as he didn't have the amount of money they were asking for. The delinquents do not give up as they still end up making the class rep give up whatever money he had left by threatening him further. They are about to walk away after taking the money when a big shadow looms over one of them, covering him from head to toe. The guy, Chuck, gazes upwards to see Michael standing there and staring at them without saying anything. This sight makes them nervous and reluctant to oppose him, and they decide to flee the scene after giving back the money they had taken to the class rep. As they are walking away, Yushin Lee also ends up catching Chuck's sight, but he decides to ignore him as well. Not wanting to have to deal with Michael again, Ad leaves the classroom. Some time has passed and Yushin Lee is on his seat observing the class while chatting with Charlie and realizes the peaceful atmosphere the class has had for the past few days all because of Michael. Seeing the usually quiet students acting bright and cheerful also cheers Yushin Lee up a bit. We skip ahead to the time after the school is over and after saying goodbye to Michael and while having a chat with Charlie, we see Yushin rush to the part in hope of finding Mujin there. He arrives at the park but fails to find Mujin anywhere when another cat walks up to him with a note tied to its neck which catches his attention. The scene cuts and we see Michael walking home through a street. Some punks can be seen in the background smoking and waiting for someone to pass by. They notice Michael and realize that he was their target Steve had told him about. They get up, flicking away their cigarettes and pick up different weapons to go after Michael, intending on roughing him up. Back at the park, we see Yushin Lee opening up the note to realize that it was a letter from Harry, who had just recently died. He had written the letter wanting to thank Yushin Lee for showing him some kindness and after reading the letter, Yushin Lee couldn't help but shed tears of grief and regret over the loss of his friend. On the other side, Michael is walking along with a group of punks following him from behind when one of the punks gets ahead and bumps with Michael by his shoulder. He screams in over-exaggerated pain as others come forward demanding an apology from Michael for injuring one of them. Michael apologizes but not taking that apology into account, they demand for some money instead. Michael again refuses their demand pissing off two of the punks and making them rush ahead with metal pipes in hand. They attack his upper body with the weapons but they get blocked by Michael with his hands. He then grabs both of them and picks them up over his shoulders. He asks the punks to leave as he didn't want to hurt them. The person leading the group walks towards him and picks up the fallen pipe from the ground telling him that they would leave but only after they had taken a leg. He swings the pipe suddenly, catching Michael off guard and hits him on his leg, causing him to fall down along with a jolt of pain coursing through his leg. Michael lets out a painful groan as he holds his leg tightly and the group of punks after having done what they were asked to, 
walks away leaving Michael alone. We are now inside a classroom and see Yushin Lee going over Harry's letter he had received and finding out that apart from apologizing to his parents, he hadn't mentioned anything related to Steve. The bell rings announcing lunchtime and Mark can be seen ordering a guy in class to go and get them some food. But the kid doesn't comply with his order and instead looks at Michael sitting at his seat. He walks up to the kid and is about to slap him across the face when he is stopped by Michael's voice. This pisses off Mark as he is not able to handle it anymore and snaps at Steve asking him to deal with him and if he did not step in, he would take it upon himself and gather another bunch of guys to kick Michael's ass. A loud boom rings out as a bench flies away, skidding across the ground, the cause of which being Steve who had stood up and kicked the bench away in anger. He calls out to Michael telling him to meet him up at the rooftop to settle their fight once and for all. He tells everyone in the class to also be present on the rooftop where he would show them who the boss of the class really was. We arrive at the rooftop and see the two, Steve and Michael, surrounded by a big crowd in a circle. Both of the fighters ready themselves for the fight as the crowd watches on with an awkward and tense gaze. Steve then takes a deep breath and exclaims in a loud voice, announcing himself as the boss of class three. After hearing this, Michael tells him that he didn't want to fight him and all that he wanted was for the class to be peaceful. This comment pisses off Steve even more as he rushes ahead with a boxing stance and delivers a quick punch which Michael promptly dodges but is unable to dodge the next punch and gets caught up in a barrage of punches getting thrown out by Steve. His movements gets restricted to the limit as all he is able to do is continue blocking the ferocious attacks and hopefully toughing it out using that robust and huge body of his. Ultimately, Steve succeeds in breaking past his defense and delivers an upper hook punch straight on his chin. In a desperate attempt to change the momentum of the battle, Michael hastily dashes ahead and grabs Steve by his arms which he easily counters by using his feet to hit Michael at his chin again. This again gives a chance for Steve to go back on an offensive. Yushin Lee, who had been watching Michael fight from the sidelines, feels guilty about only having Michael fight for all of them. Meanwhile, all they could do was hope that he would win. As he is busy with his own inner thoughts, the fight continues on and we see Michael tank one of Steve's punches with his temple. This brief moment gives Michael a chance to take a hold of Steve by his waist, and he picks him up in the air but struggles to maintain balance when a sudden jolt of pain passes through one of his legs. Noticing this thing, Steve grabs Michael by his hair and starts hammering away at his face with a rain of punches. Finally, not being able to endure any longer, Michael lets go of Steve and falls back on the ground, seemingly unconscious. Yushin Lee and the others watch with regret-filled eyes as the other delinquents celebrate Steve's victory with joy. Filled with ecstasy over his victory against Michael, Steve roars at the top of his lungs, calling himself the boss of their class again. He tells everyone present about the hell they would experience the next day because of Michael when the class rep who had previously been present at the place when Michael got assaulted by a group of punks a day prior, comes out calling out this act of cowardice. This makes Steve sweat as he continues to act as if it had nothing to do with him and that he had won through pure skill but still getting pissed off that a meek guy like the class rep was going against him. He rushes ahead intending to punch him in the face when suddenly Yushin Lee arrives in between them and receives the punch right at his face. This seems to shock both the onlookers and Steve as Yushin Lee turns his head to look at Steve like he was looking at some trash.